Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bennett. Uh, well, I'm back today with a quick video on gene mapping, but before we can get into that, we gotta talk about frequencies and kind of the setup of this thing. Uh, so I do have some data up there in the top left, and we're gonna get to that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about frequencies, right? Um, so we've got frequencies here. All of them are less than 50%. And so why is that? Well, I'll think for a moment. When we're looking at independent assortment, so I've got alleles uh, in a cell or chromosomes in a cell, and I can sketch this real quick. Uh, so I've got a cell over here. I should use something other than white ink. There's my cell. Say he's got a black gene and then a red chromosome. When that cell splits you're gonna get two daughter cells, right? So this is mitosis. Uh, so that cell is going to split this way. And this can also be applied to meiosis. And remember, we're diploid, so this is a very simplified version. I get a new cell, or two new cells. 50% of those cells, you would expect to get a black chromosome when those gametes form. 50% of those cells, you would expect to get a red chromosome when those gametes form. And so 50%, this is kind of our standard, right, when we're mapping out our gene units. And that's why when we're looking at frequencies, we are looking at frequencies less than 50%, and we are able to say with a certain amount of certainty that they are on the same chromosome. So we've got our chromosome set up here, and we need to map these things. So we need some way to measure distances. And we use something called a centimorgan, which is a map unit. So if my chromosomes, right, are, uh, if my genes are on the same chromosome compared to the frequencies, I can say that this chromosome is going to be 50 map units long. That's our standard. Up here in the data table, I've got a number of genes. So we've got genes A, uh, AB, BC, BD, and the relative frequency of recombination you see for each one. Notice they're all less than 50%, so we can assume they're on the same chromosome. And we need to map them. In order to map them, we need a way to translate a frequency into a unit of distance. And there's a couple rules that we use to do this. And the first rule is that map unit distances are arbitrary. And the unit is used, or the unit that is used is a centimorgan, C capital M, not a centimeter, a centimorgan. And this name came, comes from Thomas Hunt Morgan, who did this work with fruit flies uh, back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. And Paul Anderson has got a great video about the history of gene mapping as well as some examples. So I encourage you to go watch that. It's linked in the video description. I'm not going to get into the history here. We're just looking at application. And this example is actually from Paul's video. So uh, you will you would see the same thing there. So we've got our chromosome set up. We're recombining less than 50% of the time. So we're assuming we're on the same chromosome. And we're going to use these map units called a centimorgan and they're arbitrary. One centimorgan is equal to 1% of recombination frequency or it's a percent chance that that gene is going to uh, essentially cross over during meiosis and recombine in unexpected ways. In other words, breaking our Mendelian inheritance. The other assumption we need to make, or the other thing we need to do to get this done is to work with the largest frequency, start with the largest frequency, and then work backwards. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm going to use red just so it's a little bit easier to see. Let me make my pen a little bit bigger. So if I look down my frequency tables, I got 30%, 45, 40, 25. So we're going to start with this 45%. If this is a 50, if this uh, chromosome, right, is 50 map units long, that means that B and C are about as far apart as you can get. So we're going to put B right here and C way over there. And that takes care of that one. Next, we work backwards. So B and D is 40%. I can't go to the right of C because then I'm off the chromosome, but I can go to the left of C, and that's about 40. We're just, again, ballparking, so we're going to call that D. So that takes care of that one. So now B and D is 40, B and C is 45. Uh, the next highest would be A to B, which is 30%. So we're going to start at B. This, If this is 40, 45, then 30 is going to be, uh, I don't know, somewhere in here-ish. And we're going to call that A. And then the distance between A to D would be 25%. And so, you know, maybe we move it a little bit more to the left. But again, it's a relative, it's an arbitrary relative measurement to give us an idea of what that gene looks like. Now, when you're looking at this chromosome, the highest frequency of recombination, right, and we know this from our, from our frequency table already, is going to be between genes B and C, because they're the furthest apart. And so when those chromosomes cross over during prophase one, they have the highest likelihood of crossing over and actually 
segregating from one another. Uh, and so this is kind of the, the microscopic um, uh, application for the gene recombination stuff. And this would also be non-Mendelian inheritance. This explains why we get unexpected uh, ratios or unexpected relationships is gene recombination. So that's it. Again, if you want the history or a little bit more detail, uh, Paul Anderson's video, Bozeman Science or Bozeman Biology is really good. It's linked in the description. Feel free to watch that one. You can also leave me a comment here if you have more questions and I'd be happy to answer them.